Track Record with your hosts Mike Shea and Robert Yetter. Brought to you by Eventide Entertainment. What is up, Internet? It is time for another proper episode of Track Record. I am one of your hosts, Mike Shea. I am one of your hosts, Robert Yetter. And we are getting back to what we do best, other than... And we're awkward. And we're awkward. Yeah, we are. And uh, we are talking about some good music that we found out there on the, the Bandcamp sphere, as it were. Um, mm-hmm. we, uh, we got a lot of good stuff for you today. I think we got good stuff. I don't know what you got, but I know what I got is a lot of fun. Oh, I've got something just delicious. Well, let's let's not waste too much time here. Real quick, I want to remind everybody that uh, it is the summertime, and it's hot outside, so you should go check out shadowmagic.online and get you some cool goth metal clothing on light-colored material so you can represent and not overheat. And if you, right. if you use the, uh, the promo code MTF10 all through the month of July, you will get 10% off. At, uh, at your time of purchase, so make sure you go to shadowmagic.online. That's right. I'm also doing a uh, a uh, line called Blood Wizard. Oh yeah. Um, if if anyone's familiar with my 2012 album, what was that called? <laughs> Unbeliever. I don't yeah. I don't know why I just <laughs> zipped out of my head. Why are quick. you asking me the name of your album, dude? <laughs> <laughs> been so long i know uh yeah the first track on there is called blood wizard and so the theme for that line is it's on a uh, full full graphic uh shirts they're called all over shirts um and so you get a much larger graphic you get more designs on the shirt um crazier you know uh stuff on there and those are in dark colors they're gonna be black and red for blood wizard so there's still some some dark shit on there if you want to indulge in that. Just put a new a new design up there yesterday called Star Crossed. I think it's uh, I th- this is one of my favorites. I, I would wear that shit. Awesome. I would wear all this shit. I guess that's yeah, it's true. I guess that's good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, thank you for that. Shadowmagic dot online. Always happy to check it out. Happy to give a shameless plug for things we're doing. That's right. That's Especially right. when they're also... good quality stuff. Especially when they're good quality stuff like that. Like this isn't just like some little nothing thing. Hey, go check out go check go go check out my uh my my handmade bead jewelry I'm making. No, this is like no, like this is something legit that is filling a need. Yeah. And plus like I've seen a lot of uh this, you know, people trying to do even on the same like website that I use printful that actually, uh, you know, does all the orders and, and makes everything prints everything. It's a, you know, we talked about it as a combination between two websites that I use. Mm -hmm. One's the shop and one's the fulfillment. Um, but I've, I've, I've seen a lot of people just trying to sell like just crappy art on shirts, just like not even, like a png or anything it's just like a square you know just like a like a square jpeg that they've put on a shirt and they haven't right. even cared to like center it on the shirt i don't it's even know like a, like a, like i can't a, stand that one of those cheap t-shirt shops you see at the mall those uh what are yeah. those 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 printing where they just yeah just send us your uh your jpeg and we'll We'll ink it onto a shirt, but it just it looks pixelated and blurry and crappy. Yeah. I hear you, man. So, uh, yeah, man. Also, I was going to mention that uh, you, if you uh, follow Shadow Magic on Facebook or on Instagram, you can actually shop from those social media platforms. There's little buttons. Uh, so you can get to uh, the products from many places. And, and consume them, and I love you. Um, <laughs> all right, let's talk about some music. Get into it, buddy. Today I have an artist called Happy Axe. Uh, this is an artist from Australia, from Canberra, Australia. 
and I was just doing a little poking around on SoundCloud as I do, and just happened to click on a random thing, and and then I um, I came in my pants. So uh, it was delightful. This is Dream Pop, but it's kind of a um, there. There's elements of trip hop. Uh, kind of ambient, you know, very subtle electronic. Uh, it reminds me of. Do you remember um, the Postal Service? Yes, I do. I mean, if you if you didn't, then I would probably reach <laughs> through the screen and twerk your nipples. Yeah, no, I remember um, the Postal Service. The the producer from Postal Service, I can't remember his name, but um, he had this kind of style where he would use um it's i i would say it's kind of a form of industrial because it's kind of using like real life sounds rather than like synths or uh you know some plugin like that where you know you're manipulating waves but this is rather very sampled uh sounds you know like um you know spoons or uh like a clock or um Stuff like that, kind of, you know, like uh, found sounds. Oh, um, so like... utilize that a lot like, in this. Like doing, like, Foley sound effects, stuff like that. Kind of, but it, it's, you know, it's sampled in such a way where it's rhythmically done. You right, know? right, right. Um, obviously. Um, and, and then it's normally placed that with uh, this kind of really haunting synth sound um typically a lot of uh, a lot of violin she this uh woman is a violinist and just a phenomenal singer like um it, it's spine tingling uh my closest uh comparison is bjork but if if bjork was just a slight bit more accessible Mm -hmm. and didn't have kind of awkward uh time signatures or or melodic phrases this one's a little uh uh, happy axe is a little bit more accessible and easier to listen to um and you really just get lost in this she she's got an album that uh actually just came out uh, it was marked as coming out on the on the 18th, but that's probably the 18th in Australia, which I guess is the 17th here now. Yeah, they're ahead at, of us. At this evening time. So it's fully released right now as we speak. We're talking on a Tuesday, so when you listen to this tomorrow or whenever you do, it came out on the 17th if you're in the U.S. Um. And so I actually haven't gotten a chance. I just looked at it, and I saw that they were all, all the songs are now listenable. Um, I had only listened to the three that were available while it was on pre-order. The album's called Dream Punching. And uh, it was, it, she had two singles from it called Cheshire Heart, which is just a phenomenal song. That was the first one that I listened to. That gave me chills. She's got another single called Seven Sounds. Um, and then she's got another album called This Topia, which came out in 2015. Now, you being the the kind of the story guy that you are, I know you always like a story behind your music. Love a good story. Um, or kind of, you know, like a, a premise. Yeah. Um, and I, I kind of really liked... The, the premise of this one it, there's a little description here that she wrote out on Bandcamp uh, by the way that's happyaxe.bandcamp.com also Happy Axe on SoundCloud um, and she and, and why I like this is because it really encapsulates what the album sounds like and the feeling that you get from the album um, so I'm just going to read a little bit of this to you um So she says, this music for me ties into memories of my childhood. I think my parents liked plants more than people, but that meant we always lived in really beautiful faraway places like Belmore Falls, 
a rainforest-like place out in a national park. Uh, it was a beautiful untouched place, waterfalls, amazing trees, very isolated. She said she had a very quiet childhood, um, and that in turn enabled her to be very introspective. And um, so she kind of tried to capture the mood of that place and kind of like a childhood introspective wonder you know if you can imagine just sitting next to a waterfall and you're you know you know you're a teenager and you're just you know like you're soaking all this shit in and your emotions are going crazy and your hormones are going crazy at least that's what it would be like for me it's just, you know i'd probably write some crazy shit um and so that's what happened so i like that premise it, it's really reflected in in uh, the the tone of this album. So, uh, is there anything else I can say about it? Uh, it's on Spirit Level Records. Let me make sure that's right. Spirit Level. Um, they've got six artists, so a small Australian record label i think they're gonna uh find that they're gonna gain a little bit of popularity with this it's very well done uh the production again it's very it's very bjork like just kind of a simple you know but haunting backtrack and then just this really melodic uh heavenly sounding voice um you gotta check it out man it's good. It's Happy Axe. The album's called Dream Punching. Just came out. It's um, I wish I could tell you how much it is. I need to I need to still purchase this one. It's eleven dollars in Australian dollars. I don't know what the conversion is. Um but I don't know. Bandcamp usually does that for you if it's international. It'll tell you how much you need uh, to pay. Okay, uh uh eight dollars. Okay. 812 USD or more. So that's 11 tracks for 8 bucks, and you will have a happy old time, and you will definitely, you know, trip out on this one for sure. You, you will. Th- this is one of the ones, as with a lot of the Dream Pop and a lot of the stuff that we've talked about the past couple months, really, because we've been on this kick. Yeah, we have. <laughs> uh, you, you have to just, you know, close your eyes put this shit in your in your head as loud as possible and just transport yourself so there you have it it's a four out of four perps for me buddy that's fantastic it sounds really good i'm looking at the stuff right now and uh again i love the use of black and white photography for the album art i'm noticing that um it's not a long listen like it's something that you could spend your money on and and listen to in one go and not have to like plan your day around it. It's something that you can yeah listen to. It pretty does easily. have. It's got it. It's kind of back and forth with mm-hmm. small track, big track, small track, big track, and so it, it's very dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really not. It's not too long. Um, I mean, if I would have to do a little math here, uh, probably forty minutes. That's not bad. So, I mean, that's perfect, man. Yeah. For an $8 album? Hell yeah. This is this is like one of those gems that you hope to find mm-hmm. when you're just randomly clicking on something that sounds cool. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, Happy Axe? That sounds cool. You know, uh, Cheshire Heart. You know, I'm going to click on that shit and just, you know. It's a happy accident, man. That's why I love... <laughs> The, the feature on SoundCloud is if you go to home and then you click on discover and then you click on a track you've listened to or liked, mm-hmm. it'll show you like related stuff. Um, and it, But what's cool is that it'll show you related stuff that is around the same uh, level of popularity. So it's not, there, it's not going to throw in something that has 3 million plays versus something that has 500. Right. It, it's all, it's all going to be like, you know, if, if around the you know the low point of whatever, it's going to be around the amount of listens of whatever you've clicked on that you say you want to see more of that. Um, it's a really great feature. It's the the discover feature in SoundCloud. I don't know if you've ever used it, but um, 
It's Gucci. Yes, it is. All right, man. Oh, there you go, man. Fantastic. Well, we'll uh, let's 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 step aside real quick. Let's let's plug some stuff. We'll advertise some stuff real quick, and we come back. I uh, I may or may not have something that's gonna break the mold a little bit with what we've been doing. We'll see. But uh, let's let's take a quick break, and we come back. I got something to talk about. Talking about movies is what Aaron Lopez does best. We are talking about the greatest showman. Thor Ragnarok. Love, Simon. Hereditary. With an army of special guests. Jordan Lopez. Aaron Brewer. Jack Elliott. My good friend Carly. Special moments you don't want to miss. The very first ever (laughs) drunk drive-in. We are more looking at the Oscar nominations. So grab some snacks and a cold drink. Let's all go to the lobby, refill your drinks. Every Thursday. Eventide Entertainment presents The Drive-In. Goths, metalheads, wiccans, vampires. If there's one thing we all have in common, it's our all-black wardrobes. And nothing is a bigger enemy of black clothing than the endless summertime heat. But fear not, Shadow Magic is here to alleviate your suffering. Original symbolic designs set on light-colored clothing lets you be yourself without the heat stroke. Go to shadowmagic.online and use the code MTF10 to receive 10% off at checkout. Shadow Magic. Represent the darkness without melting in the sun. Welcome back, friends. It's Track Record. It's Mike Shea. It's Robert Yetter. We're doing this thing. Doing it right. Uh, I just uh, talked about Happy Axe, an album called Dream Punching. A very, very wonderful artist from Australia that I believe that everyone should check out if you are at all interested in uh, shit that will blow you away and and, and just uh, make your mind transcend to a different realm. Check that out. Uh, I mean, I am curious to see what you have there, Mike. Lay it on me, buddy. So I love that off the air, before we got into this, we were talking about uh, video games, GameCube controllers, and and how revolutionary the the SNES was. Um, so the other day, for whatever reason, I was I was listening to a band called Power Glove. You ever heard of Power Glove? I have. Uh, yeah. They do the, they're doing their metal covers of like Power Rangers theme and and Doctor Wily's theme song and stuff like that. And uh, after that, I went on to Bandcamp and was just I decided I wanted to get something I hadn't talked about yet. I wanted to get some some big band swing jazz. Oh, okay. And lo and behold, well, how is this? To, how is this connected? I'm getting to it. Uh, okay. And, and right. lo and behold, I found a band called the Eight Bit Big Band. Okay. All right. I dig it. And what they what they have is they released an album last year called Press Start. And uh, first of all, I love the album cover because it's all done in like eight bit little video game avatars looking things. It's a huge big band playing a show. Um, there's like little f- like Pokeballs and Fire Flowers and Sonic the Hedgehog rings and Pac-Man power pills. There's all kinds of video game Easter eggs around. Even at the front door, there's a box that says, Leave your swords here. And you can see the Buster Sword from Final Fantasy VII. You can see Sephiroth's sword. You can see the Keyblade. You can see the Master Sword. Lots of video game goodness. And what this is is this oh, yeah. is this is a legitimate massive number of people orchestra big band doing video game theme songs and and music but also incorporating the sound effects from the game into the songs. Oh my gosh. So you've got violins and guitars and uprights and clarinets and all that good stuff singers from is they're they're based out of new york there's a lot of people from all over the world involved but they're based out of new york so you get people playing actual orchestra instruments but they're also incorporating like the sounds from the game into the music as well so we talked a little we talked a little bit a little bit uh during during your album about how like you know people doing like foley sound effects and rhythmic sound effect recording there's a lot of that here with this as well as legitimate musical instruments and i gotta tell you it's some of the most fun i've ever had listening to an album it was something i went into just thinking okay this is going to be cheesy and 
dumb and whatever. And I found myself listening to it all the way to the end. I, I, I'm going to look that shit up right now. <laughs> I couldn't stop. It was a lot of fun. Like I said, these guys, it's a 25-member jazz pop orchestra um, called the 8-Bit Big Band. They're based out of New York City. And uh, they, in May, I'm sorry, they, they promote, they released like a single from the album last year. They released the full album this year in May. Um, there's stuff from Zelda, Super Mario 64, Super Mario Brothers 2, Ocarina of Time, F Zero, uh, Earthbound, Katamari Dam- Damacy. There's some good stuff in here. Holy shit! Uh, Final Fantasy One main theme. I'm pressing play. <laughs> absolutely. Um, the, the the first track is just called Opening, and it's literally the opening to Super Mario 64, followed by the Bob on Battlefield. These guys are delightful. I can't recommend this enough. I have, even just now, like Robert can see me in the camera. I have got the biggest smile on my face talking about this. <laughs> you will, you yeah. You look like a giddy little kid right you, now. This turns you into a giddy little kid because this is my childhood. They are putting because I love big band jazz, and they're putting my childhood into big band jazz, and it's just so much fun. Um, the best part about this too is that right now it's a name your price album on SoundCloud. I see that. So you can pay what you want. I, I paid five bucks. If you're someone who's just really strapped for cash, don't have any money you can spare, you know, you can get you can pick it up for free. But if you do that, make sure you let you, you leave them a message and say like, "Hey, I really dig it. Sorry, I don't have any money for it, but I really wanted to get a hold of it." They appreciate stuff like that. But this thing is worth whatever amount of money you decide you want to put into it. Five bucks, ten bucks, whatever. Um, it's just so much fun. And it was something I really needed because I had been having a shitty couple of weeks. And so for me to get something this light and just festive and entertaining was just great. And I can't wait to see what they do next. I hope they do something again. I hope I, the, uh, I hope they do something more. Uh, I hope they have something else in the works right now. I imagine with 25 members, it's a little hard to coordinate recording schedules. Um, yeah. But just, oh, it's... I don't know. In this day and age, you can just send send the track to somebody and have them lay something down. And Yeah, but you still got to, like, you know... Get it all to the mixer and that's it. You still got to give, like, your feedback and be like, can you try doing the... Yeah. I'm, I'm sure with 25 people, the process is a little more difficult. But still, um, I, I want to find out if these guys, like, play shit live. Like, if they do, like, live shows, shit, that might be, like, a weekend trip to New York or something because this is just so much fun. Um, I, I bought it as soon as I heard the first couple of songs. Um, I think my favorite is their rendition of Zelda's Lullaby from the Ocarina of Time. Um, that yeah. that one or the, uh, Big Blue from F-Zero is pretty good. They're all real. I mean, there's not a bad one on here. But uh, it's just, yeah, it's this is so great. And I, I can't stop, every time I listen to this, I can't stop staring at the album art and trying to see if there's like a new thing that I didn't see the first time that I might have missed. Like the portal poster uh, by the front door or the fact that some of the silhouettes in the audience of the club the band is playing in, um, there's a Pikachu in there. There's a Sonic the Hedgehog in there. Um, trying to find things that I didn't notice the first time is, is great. It's so well designed. It's so clever. And that, that, I think, right there is probably the one word that can describe this album the best. It is clever. This was a Someone had a really good idea when they came up with this and they took it and ran with it and I think it just worked out wonderfully. So that's a it's a four out of four for me on this one. Uh four out of four eight bit purple stars for the eight bit big band. Cool. Yeah. Is there like an expanded version of this this cover? Um if you go to their website, yeah, it's it's you can see more of it. Um the website is just the eight bit big band. Oh, oh okay, I see it. Yeah, you can see the whole there's a Yoshi egg in there. There's the Pokeball. There's an Xbox controller. Uh, there's Pac-Man. There's just oh, there's just stuff everywhere. There's the box. Jeez. There's the box you hide under in Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> just hanging out over in the corner. 
<laughs> yeah. It's good stuff, man. Can't recommend this one enough. All right. Do they have 25 people in there? Uh, one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Yeah, they got 25 people. There you go. <laughs> I want to have an 8-bit version of myself. That'd be cool. Right? Is there like a like a website that's like make your own 8-bit you or something? I guess it couldn't be that hard. I mean, it's just pixels. <coughs> I know, but I'm lazy. Just, if somebody could do it for me, it'd really be great. <laughs> pixelated. Maybe I'll try one day. Do that one day. Just get a uh, get eight bits of all the of all the podcast hosts. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> oh man, this is cool, isn't it? Yeah, no. Uh, this is something that like you you throw on on a on a on a on a drive home from work when you just like I don't really know what I feel like listening to. This will put you in a good mood. It's it's just so much fun. So yeah, eight bit big band. It is on SoundCloud. It has been the album has been reposted uh, to our SoundCloud, um, like we do every week. And yes, indeed. Just yeah, can't can't t- can't stop telling you how much fun this was. Well, I dig it, man. Hell yeah. Someone named Robin Williams is following us now. Robin Williams is following us now? A person on SoundCloud <laughs> that has chosen the name Robin Williams is. I was going to say, I have questions. <laughs> Weird. Anyway. Well, that sounds good, man. I know we're, we're doing a little quick episode here, but uh, we just had to throw some music at you folks. Yeah, we did. Had to get this going get it going so we will uh we will in fact be back next week with another episode of track record have all kinds of musical goodness for you we will and uh robert i think with that i think we have a show sir (gasps) whoa the timing oh that timing could not have been better (laughs) and the laundry's done (laughs) Well, it's, it's almost as good as, as the, uh, you know, when your mom was yelling down, <laughs> you want some cookies? I uh, haven't done a live show since. <laughs> Mike, I made cookies. Do you want some cookie? Yes, mom, I do. Uh, thanks, mom. <laughs> if there was, if, if anyone ever thought that it was a ruse, you know, just to, you know appear like a, a struggling artist that lives in his mom's basement. I legitimately do. It's it's <laughs> legit, folks. <laughs> uh, I would not lie uh, about something like that. Trust me, it's too good. <laughs> it's good stuff. All right, man. Well, I dig it. Yeah, buddy. We hope uh, we hope the audience digs it. And, um, yeah, go check out this good music. Yeah. And we'll bring more you good know, we, music for you next week. Yeah, we're not going to steer you in the wrong direction. Well, Mike might. Oh. Because he's a metalcore fan. Oh, okay. But, you know. Okay. Oh, did you see the meme? It's like, um, I don't know if it was it exactly, but somebody commented this, and I was actually going to comment it, but it, you know how they keep doing this meme where they keep something something is the nickelback of something? Yeah. Um, so it was like, uh, Metalcore is the nickel back of metal. Oh. Uh, That's so true. Yeah, whatever. What the fuck ever. It's true, it's true. Yeah. Don't care. Still love it. <coughs> no shame. No. no shame. Still love it. You have some shame. I have no shame, sir. All right, well. You're wrong. So I'm a grown man in his mom's basement drinking apple juice out of a Thor cup making a podcast about 8-bit big band music. I have no fucking shame, sir. <laughs> oh, also, I saw this other meme because this is relative to uh, what we talked about last time mm-hmm. when we were talking about controversial things. Yeah, we were. Um, well, just at the beginning, really. And uh, about pineapples on pizza. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's this meme. The first picture is a you know normal looking casket. It says poor, and then the second picture is the same looking casket. It says rich, and then um, 
Oh fuck! I I just I screwed it up because I don't remember what the third picture was. Damn it! But it was something about uh, you know people who like pineapples on pizza. <laughs> they, don't, they don't deserve the right, uh, you know, the normal burial. No, they don't. It was something. Maybe they were like getting set on fire or something like that. <laughs> yes, as they should, because pineapple shouldn't go on pizza. Well, you know, that's just like your opinion, man. Yeah, it is. It really fucking is. Oh, my Facebook is looking weird these days. Yeah? Who are these people that I am friends with? I don't know, it's just like random shit all the time. I guess that is all Facebook is anymore. Pretty much. Pretty much, man. And a lot of anime stuff, because I follow a bunch of anime pages. Because <laughs> why? Because I'm a nerd. Yeah, you Damn are. Damn it. Anyway, I think we have a show, right? You said it. Yeah, I, 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 I said we have a show. You did, indeed. I did. You did, indeed. <laughs> I just wanted to say it one time. If, <laughs> it's okay. If, you know, Let you get one if in. I'm allowed. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, you're Thanks, allowed. Man. All right, folks at home, we'll see you next week. Have a lovely time. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.